From prestigious museums whose statues purportedly come to life after dark, to historic mansion homes stalked by the restless spirits of their many past inhabitants, are you sure you are ready to brave our picks for some of the most haunted places in Oklahoma? Number 5. Gage's Steakhouse Gage's Steakhouse, which is located off of West Oklahoma Avenue out of Guthrie, Oklahoma, is a former railroad station turned restaurant. Its accommodating structure is the old Santa Fe Depot of Guthrie, which is iconic to the whole of the Guthrie Historic District. Historically, through the 1800s, the railroad industry would boom, with the first tracks reaching Guthrie doing so in 1887 to meet a pre-designed train depot. Later, in 1903, our current two-story brick Santa Fe station was completed and was utilized in the housing of passenger services, mail services, and even offered employee living quarters and a newsstand. At the turn of the 1900s, when Guthrie still acted as the capital of the Oklahoma Territory, up to 40 trains were swinging through its station daily, and at one point, the establishment even held a Harvey House restaurant. However, following the 1910 transfer of the new state of Oklahoma's capital to Oklahoma City instead, and decades of improvements in growing popularity in automobile travel, in 1979, the station would close to passenger services, shortly before its eventual restoration and transformation into restaurants and event space. In the present, the old Santa Fe Depot of Guthrie remains open, housing Gage's Steakhouse while offering event space and a small collection of memorabilia. The most famous ghost story associated to this weathered property surrounds Pearl Harvey, wife of the infamous Fred Harvey of the iconic Harvey House restaurants. As it's told, Pearl enjoyed her time at the old Guthrie Depot and even considered it as she would a second home. It said she loved it so much, in fact, that following her death, her spirit might just have found its way back to the beloved site. To date, both staff and guests at Gage's have reported encounters with a woman clad in a Victorian dress that bears a likeness to Pearl and who's usually either sighted in upstairs windows looking out over the tracks or within a room it's believed was hers long ago. Number 4. The Philbrook Museum of Art the Philbrook Museum of Art, which is located off of South Rockford Road out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, is a renowned gallery and place of learning offering nine separate collections from across the globe, the cornerstone of which focuses on native arts such as basketry, pottery, paintings, and jewelry, alongside a sweeping formal gardens. Historically, the structure that now holds our Philbrook Museum was initially built in 1927 as an Italian Renaissance villa-styled home for oil painter Waite Phillips and his wife Genevieve. In 1938, the Phillips would donate their villa Philbrook and its lands to the city of Tulsa. A year later, in 1939, the Philbrook Museum of Art would open under first director Eugene Kingman. In 1940, studio art classes were started on site, and in 1941, a touring program for children was established, which, over time, would eventually lead to the 1949 opening of the Children's Museum. In 1969, and in response to a rising number of attendees to the aforementioned studio art classes, the museum would welcome the addition of a new wing, and in 1990, the site would see another expansion in the form of the 70,000-square-foot Kravis Wing, which includes exhibition space, a public entry rotunda, a museum school, library, an expanded shop and event space, and a restaurant that seats up to 100. The Philbrook Museum of Art remains open into the present, offering a mass assortment of antiquities from around the world, a range of special events and classes, and of course, touring options. While it's unknown who or what exactly haunts the Philbrook, this prestigious old property has long been shrouded in stories of the supernatural, with those frequenting its bounds reporting extreme cold spots, disembodied scratching and knocking noises, and encounters with shadowy apparitions that stalk the living. Several informal investigations of the museum have yielded high EMF levels, chilling EVPs, and malfunctions with well-maintenanced equipment, while others have documented lights flicking on and off throughout the halls when no one else is around. What are easily some of the most disturbing tales to emerge from the Philbrook involve its many statues, with more innocent accounts telling of their eyes or heads moving to follow those who pass, and increasingly terrifying claims involving these creations actually dismounting their displays before lumbering ominously around the building. Number 3. Fort Reno Fort Reno, which is located off of West Cheyenne Street, just out of El Reno, Oklahoma, is a former U.S. Army Cavalry outpost that derives its name in honor of General Jesse L. Reno, who died at the Battle of South Mountain through the American Civil War. 
Historically, through early July of 1874, what would soon become Fort Reno would begin as nothing more than a temporary encampment and defense for the nearby Darlington Agency, which required protection from a native uprising that would eventually lead to the Red River War. And following local conflict, by July 15th, Fort Reno was officiated. Proceeding Oklahoma's statehood in 1907, the following year, on February 24th of 1908, the post would be left abandoned save for acting as a quartermaster's remount depot. Through World War II, German and Italian POWs would be held on site. In 1949, Army operations at the fort would cease entirely, following which it would be transferred to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, who utilizes the expanse for its grazing lands research laboratory. And in 1970, Fort Reno was added to the National Register of historic places. Through the 1990s, the fort was open to the public, and while 6,740 acres of its bounds remain property of the U.S. Department of Agriculture for its grazing lands, available open space does include a visitor center, which is operated under the non-profit historic Fort Reno, Incorporated. Fort Reno remains open into the present, offering its interpretive center, a range of exhibits and memorabilia, and touring options of both the historic and haunted varieties, and rightfully so, as the whole of this weathered defense is purported to harbor a range of restless spirits, with both staff and visitors reporting extreme cold spots, disembodied voices and footsteps, and orbs and half-formed silhouettes captured in the backgrounds of photography. The Fort Reno Cemetery holds the remains of pioneer citizens, of military personnel, of the victims of various disputes, of POWs that died near, and even of one Ben Clark who was actually a frontier scout for George Armstrong Custer and Philip Sheridan. And those who have braved the old yard have told of odd electrical malfunctions, of run-ins with shadowy figures and with ghostly children that frolic eerily about, and of encounters with a range of apparitions in clothing spanning the eras. Lastly, through the locale and namely after dark, both locals and visitors have reported phantom gunfire, orders shouted by otherworldly voices, and ghostly soldiers observed marching about. Number 2. The Henry Overholzer Mansion the Henry Overholzer Mansion, which is located off of Northwest 15th Street, out of the Heritage Hills neighborhood of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, is a prominent historic abode that's widely recognized as the city's first mansion. Historically, this significant estate would be completed in 1903 under none other than the father of Oklahoma City himself, Henry Overholzer, alongside his wife, Anna. Sadly, Henry would pass on in 1915, after which he would leave his home to Anna and their daughter, also, strangely, Henry. In 1926, Ms. Henry Ione Overholzer would marry one David Berry. In 1937, Anna would transfer ownership of the property to Henry and David, and following, she would continue to reside on site with the couple until her death in 1940. Following Henry Ione's death in 1959, the mansion would be transferred to Mr. Perry, after which David would sell the home and its belongings to the Oklahoma chapter of American Institute of Architects and Historical Preservation, Incorporated, who in turn would turn the expanse over to the state, with the Oklahoma Historical Society managing its bounds from 1982 to 2003, and Preservation Oklahoma taking the reins from 2003 and onward. More recently, in 2015, the Overholzer Mansion would well Welcome a full restoration. The mansion remains open into the present, offering tours, event space, and, according to local legends, its fair share of paranormal activity, with those braving its grounds reporting footsteps heard from empty spaces, disembodied voices that emanate from thin air, and instances in which motion detectors or alarms are set off inexplicably after dark. Some more popular stories claim the ghost of the former Queen of Oklahoma City herself, Anna Overholzer, still wanders about her old family abode, and both staff and visitors have told of catching small glimpses of an ethereal woman in a white gown with her hair up, who matches Anna's description, and who's usually spied drifting about in an otherworldly manner. Also reported across mansion grounds are instances of staff having their names called from empty rooms, of doors opening and closing on their own, of objects sighted moving about inexplicably, of ghostly faces materializing in windows and reflections, and of the unnerving feelings of being watched, of being followed, of being touched, of being grabbed, or even of having one's hair pulled by something unseen. A spectral little boy has been spied always seemingly just rounding corners or disappearing from sight, and several other entities matching various overholzers or family friends have been observed roaming about. Number 1. Southeastern Oklahoma State University 
Southeastern Oklahoma State University, which is located on a 269-acre campus based out of Durant, Oklahoma, is a public institution that's earned renown for both its acclaimed aviation and teacher education programs. Historically, on June 14th of 1909, Southeastern would open its doors to students as a simple college, with initial school proceedings housed out of temporary quarters pending the January 1911 completion of Morrison Hall, which has also long been known as the Administration Building. In 1921, this early school would be elevated to a four-year college, after which it would re-establish itself as the Southeastern State Teachers College. In 1928, construction of the site's first library, now the Henry G. Bennett Memorial Library, was completed, and in 1939, the whole of the college was expanded upon and would reofficiate itself as Southern State College, with new courses offering non-education related Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science degrees. Subsequently, following years of additional expansions to its infrastructure, Southeastern would be elevated once more in 1974 to university status. Southeastern Oklahoma State University remains open into the present, boasting an enrollment of 5,400 students, while offering three separate academic schools being of arts and sciences, of business, and of education and behavioral science. While Southeastern totes a much smaller enrollment than some of the other schools we've covered in the past, make no mistake, it's just as chock full of campus legends and horror stories as many of our larger universities, with fables persisting through generations of alumni. Some tell the Hallie McKinney dorm building is haunted by the energy of the thousands of students to pass through it, and within, many report footsteps heard from vacant spaces, disembodied voices that emanate from thin air, and objects sighted moving around on their own. Faucets and showers are often found turned on inexplicably, while several have returned to various rooms to find furniture completely rearranged in under impossible time frames. Other popular legends surround Montgomery Auditorium within the Morrison Building, where it's told two separate presences wonder. The first is rumored to be that of either a young woman or of a little boy, dependent on who you ask, that supposedly died in the building's basement pool through the early 20th century, and whose spirit, it's claimed, remains in said space. Morrison's second ghost purportedly belongs to a worker who fell from scaffolding during a 1950s renovation and who died on impact. Chillingly, those who were questioned following this worker's demise were actually documented as stating that he hadn't slipped, but rather that it had appeared as if something had scared him, leading many to speculate it's possible he was startled by the hall's first ghost. On a side note, if this were the case, it would actually surprisingly mark one of our first ghost murders. Pretty spooky stuff. This latter presence has been known to follow the living around, opening and closing doors while creating strange sounds. Lastly, the third floor of the Shearer Hall dorms is always locked, and common campus lore dictates it's because of all the ghostly happenings that transpired there through the years. One story tells that long ago, a young student's heart was broken by her boyfriend, resulting in her taking her own life right at Shearer, and also in her restless spirit becoming trapped on sight. Another tale tells long ago a young man who lived within the dorm shot several students before turning his gun on himself. Whatever the case, students and faculty who have managed to peek the third floor have told of spook lights that drift about after dark, of disembodied footsteps, and of the unnerving sounds of what seems to be something heavy being dragged somewhere out of sight. Taking its intriguing history into account and coupling it with such a formidable slew of purported hauntings and the aforementioned worker who might have actually been killed courtesy of one of the school's resident ghosts, we felt there really was no better choice than Southeastern Oklahoma State University as our pick for the most haunted place in Oklahoma. Thanks for tuning in for this list of some of the most haunted places in Oklahoma. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this upload, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll catch you all next time.